Hey everyone. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make this in about 10 minutes or so. If you don't believe me, stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Kevin with InventSmart, back again. And today we're going to be doing something somewhat more advanced than what I've been doing. I'm going to start getting into more difficult procedures and how-tos and just little things here and there. It's good to kind of challenge yourself to something that you're not quite comfortable with or familiar with and kind of get a little bit of practice of something that's a little bit more than you're used to. So today I'm going to show you an example of that and I'm going to create something. You'll know what it is by the time I get halfway done with it. But the first thing we want to do is delete the cube, of course, because I hardly ever use that. And the first thing is the curve, just the bezier curve. And normally that's supposed to be to the center. I was messing around earlier. <laughs> okay, it's at the center now. I'm just going to duplicate that, so we got two of them. The first curve here Go into the settings next to the modifiers is the curve tool. And what we want to do with that is make this full. As I went over in the beginner's tutorial, it shows how to make how this works. It kind of makes it a full round tube instead of a half one. And the resolution, we're going to put this one pretty high on this. And I like to go in wireframe mode to be able to see exactly how much going into that. And so we got that. And I'm just going to try to make the shape how I want it here. And what we're going to do is actually take this object and add a taper to it. That's why I copied this curve because we're going to use that as the taper. So now this object is linked to this one. So if we go into edit mode on this and change this, the uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but you can change the taper by moving the curves around. I'll make this length here taper. It's a little bit bigger over here. I'm just going to the side mode here. And you can adjust the curves by changing the way that the ends here go. Besides just manipulating the single thing by itself, you can change it like that. So the end curve, I kind of want to make that end part there go a little smaller. If you just extract out a, another end, it kind of makes it a little smaller, but I want it not quite that small. That should be good there. Out of wireframe mode. So now that I have my general shape that I want, I'm going to convert this to a mesh by Alt C. And I'm going to make this a solid object. So 
got quite a lot of polygons on it, but we need that for what I'm about to do. This is the uh, basically the reason why I don't like using other modeling programs to model things, because you can't do this kind of stuff with other modeling programs. And I'll show you why here in just a little bit. This really can't be done in anything else that I'm aware of this easily. You kind of just want to make similar shapes. And as it tapers down, you want to make them smaller. I don't want to have them be a little bit random, but not quite that random. You see that I'm pushing Control 7, takes me to the bottom orthographic. And this is a spot where we're probably going to be using undo a couple times just to make sure everything is working like it needs to be. You don't want them connecting at all like that. Just using the multi select tool with the C while you're in edit mode. is going kind of nuts in the background. You can hear it, probably not. I edit the sound usually to make it so it's not too much noise in the background so you can actually hear me. Okay, this is kind of a tedious process here, but once I get done showing you here, smaller here. Oh, we don't want that. Looks <laughs> <clears throat> like the end selected. We don't want that either. Okay, so we have those all selected now. Next thing we want to do is Press W and then loop tools and then circle. You kind of want to look over these, see if there's any that are acting really strange, like this one here. So this is where we've got to undo, just kind of modify it slightly. Try it again. That one's not bad anymore. Got another goofy one over here. Try it again. That's better. I want to look around the entire thing. Okay. Now we got circles on all those. What we want to do now is extrude. And then I did the wrong thing there. So undo. We need to go over to individual origins and extrude. Go out a little bit. Side Z 0.75. It's going to make them point down, sort of. And see what it did there is it extract, extruded all of them on each of them, their own individual axes. That's what the individual origin things that does. It works awesome. Then extract it again. Size it down. Extract it again. Whoa. <laughs> Check it again, size it down. Okay, 
and there we have octopus tentacle and try to make that in any other CAD program or anything like that this is where Blender really shines is the things like this I mean <laughs> this is why I like using this it's uh, easy to do stuff like this if you just figure out a process that works best for you and then there you go that's how you make each one and this is basically what I was going to show today is just how to make a tentacle for an octopus. Well, thanks for watching. Have a good day.